Bismillahu alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The 11th juz of the Qur'an, the 11th para, is a continuation of Surah At-Tawbah. And it is basically the end of Surah At-Tawbah and the rest of the juz is basically uh, the next surah, which is Surat Yunus. And so, in uh, the remaining part of Surah At-Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues uh, the discussion regarding the hypocrites and uh, their excuses that they had put forth to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and to the believers for their absence from going out and participating in the jihad. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a description of the Bedouins, Al-A'rab, and how, uh, you know, they are of various kinds. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that you have, uh, in general, the Bedouins, their nature is that, you know, they, they have a lot of hypocrisy and kufr. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that there are among them those who are upright and those who are people of Iman and Taqwa. And so they are not all the same. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, the sabiquna min al muhajirin wal ansar the muhajirun and the ansar, uh, and praised them, and mentioned how Allah is pleased with them, and that they are pleased with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in this description of the muhajirun and the ansar, is basically a virtue of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spoke highly of them, and so no one should speak uh, about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with any uh, negative uh, characteristics, and uh, no one should uh, speak ill of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, the story of uh, Masjid al-Dirar and how the hypocrites had basically built a masjid uh, on the outskirts of Medina uh, in order to rival Masjid Quba so that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come and pray in their masjid and bless it. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed the munafiqoon and mentioned how the only reason why they built this masjid is not to be a place of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather a place where the munafiqoon would gather and where they would plot against uh, the believers. And so pay attention here to the significance of one's intention. And so on the outset, it seems that they did such a huge deed and a good thing. They built a masjid. However, uh, everything goes back to intentions. And so because their intention was corrupt and evil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa from going and praying in that masjid. And Allah compared it to the other masjid, which is Masjid Quba, that was built upon piety and upon taqwa. And that is the masjid that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa should pray in. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, a description of those who sold themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he made a deal or uh, a contract, a business contract with certain believers. And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has bought and purchased the lives and the wealth of the believers in exchange for what? For Jannah. And so they are basically those who go out and fight in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selling their souls, dying fi sabilillah, their reward is nothing but Jannah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, after that, he mentions that we are forbidden from seeking forgiveness for the mushrikun, even if they be close of kin, 
even if they be our mothers and our fathers and our brothers and our sisters, we are forbidden from seeking forgiveness for them if they die upon shirk and upon kufr. And so this shows us the reality of what is known as al-wala' wal-bara' uh, loyalty for Allah, for the Messenger and for the believers and disloyalty and announcing one's uh, uh, one's innocence or one's uh, departure from the mushrikun, uh, regardless of whether they are your blood relations or not. And so these are red lines that we do not cross. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that he mentions the story of the three who remained behind, who did not go out for jihad, when the call for jihad was made. And so Allah mentioned throughout this surah, the hypocrites, the munafiqun, and how they remain behind and put forward excuses to the Prophet ﷺ. However, there were three companions who also did not make it. And when they were asked by the Prophet ﷺ, they were honest. And they said, we have no excuse, Ya Rasulullah. There are many, many lessons that can be learned from their story. And their story has been mentioned here in the Qur'an, uh, not in detail. However, it has been mentioned in quite extensive detail in, uh, in the various ahadith, and especially in Sahih Bukhari, it is mentioned in a very, very long hadith by one of these three who narrated what took place. And so basically, there are many lessons that can be learned. One of the most important lessons is that one should never give up hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so even if you are drowning in sin, never give up in the mercy of Allah and hope for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also we learn the good result of honesty, the end result of being honest and not lying. And so these three companions, you know, they could have put forward excuses saying that, you know, they were busy, they were this, they were that, but they didn't. They, they, they remained honest and said, we had no excuse, Ya Rasulullah. And so as a result of their honesty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them as an example for the believers. And so Allah said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who believe, fear Allah and be with the honest, with these three who were honest. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ended Surah At-Tawbah by mentioning uh, the relationship that different categories of people have with the Qur'an. And so you have the, the, the believers and how they respond to the verses of the Qur'an. You have the kuffar and you have the hypocrites, how they respond to the verses when they are revealed. After that, we move on to Surah Yunus. And the entire Surah, Surah Yunus, is basically affirming the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for most of the first part of the surah, uh, affirms His oneness, talks about the various ayat, the signs in Allah's creation that prove the existence of Allah and also that prove that He is one and that He is not only one in His rububiyyah, in His lordship, him being one uh, creating everything, but also him being one in his uluhiya that he alone deserves to be worshipped. And so Allah mentions many, many examples, parables, and also mentions how uh, the mushrikun, who associate partners with Allah, when they are in distress, that is when they call upon Allah alone and they forget about their their partners that they used to associate with Allah. So this shows that they affirm the oneness of Allah, but when they are safe and you know they are no longer in distress, they go back to worshiping their idols. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, in the surah, uh, the true uh, characteristics of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah says, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Verily, the awliya of, the, of Allah, the close allies and friends of Allah, 
they are those who should not fear. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. They should not fear nor shall they grieve. Who are they? And then Allah says, الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون. They are those who 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 used to believe and those who used to have taqwa. And so a true wali of Allah subhanahu wa taala is the one who has iman and taqwa. Not those people who claim to be wali of Allah and yet they are the furthest from these descriptions that Allah has uh, described to us in the Quran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Nuh alayhi salam briefly and then he mentions that he sent many prophets and messengers after Nuh until Musa alayhi salam and then Allah mentions the story of Musa and Fir'aun and how Fir'aun uh, drowned. Basically, Allah mentioned how Fir'aun in his last moments, as he is drowning, uh, he calls out saying, Now I believe, Ya Allah. And so Allah responds by saying, al ana, Now? Now is not the time to believe. Now it is too late. And so Allah mentions that he made Fir'aun to be an ayah, a sign for those who will come after. Meaning that Allah preserved his body and that is exactly what happened. Uh, they found the body of Fir'aun and to this day it is preserved and it can be found in a museum in Egypt. And so Allah made his body an ayah, a sign, an ibra, a lesson for those who will come afterwards. That this is the end result of those who oppose the messengers and are tyrannical and oppressive. And with that we come to the end of Surah Yunus, and with that we come to the end of this session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.